Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Kaufman, and we're about to go beyond the terminus. One of the most frequent questions that clinicians will ask me is, which file system should I buy? At a recent American Association of Endodontics meeting, one of the speakers claimed that there was over 450 different endodontic file systems available for purchase around the world. There's general agreement that we've moved away from hand instrumentation for the majority of the preparation toward the use of engine-driven rotary nickel titanium files of different sizes and designs. Each of the file manufacturers claims to have advantages over the other, whether it be in taper, metallurgy, heat treatment, flute design, flexibility, or conservation of tooth stretcher. One thing needs to be made clear. The use of hand files is not obsolete. What clinically differentiates a specialist from the generalist is the ability to bend and negotiate canal systems with hand files. Check out my other Beyond the Terminus video that discusses how to bend hand files if you haven't done so already. This is not what engine rotary files do best, and rotary files simply cannot do this on their own. Endodontic treatment starts with the end goal in mind, that being to get the canal system as thoroughly cleaned and obturated as well as possible. While it's not possible for us to anticipate all of the intricate and complex anatomy of endodontic cases, Proper preoperative imaging with both 2D and 3D technology allows us to try to mind map, see the case prior to attempting treatment. This is the normal part of routine case assessment. In the case of the general practitioner who does not do endodontics routinely, this is also a big part of deciding whether the case should be referred to a specialist rather than treated in their own office. No magic file design is a replacement for prudent referral of a case when it's indicated. Attempting to power through curvatures to gain the estimated work length only serves to ledge the canals. At that point, should you decide to refer the case, now you've made the case much more difficult for the specialist than it needed to be, to the point where sometimes the optimal conventional treatment may not even be possible. If you ask any endodontist, what is the essence of endodontic treatment? Most will say that if you can get a number 15 hand file to the terminus, the case is basically done. At that point, it really doesn't matter which rotary system that you use. There's no question that during the past 30 years or so, the movement away from hand instrumentation to rotary nickel titanium engine driven instruments has allowed us easier and more conservative preparation of the canals. The fact that you've achieved patency consistent reproducible working length and reasonable straight line access to the canal gives you the best opportunity for optimal results. The size of your canals and therefore the kind of instruments you use in your rotary handpiece also is influenced by the obturating method that you use to fill the canals. Those of us who use the warm gutta percha method for obturation of the canals like to have more tapered canals that allow for deeper placement of compacting instruments. This allows us to get our pluggers within five to seven millimeters of the end of the canal. This also implies that the canals will have what is known as deeper shape. More recent philosophies regarding remaining dentin thickness have resulted in more conservative canal preparation. These minimalist preparations make it difficult for us to use the classic one vertical compaction technique, and clinicians have moved away from this method of obturation to a single cone surrounded by some sort of bioceramic sealer. I find it ironic how the pendulum has swung in our specialty. In the 50s and 60s, endodontists used to use silver cones embedded in cement to try to fill canals. As we became more aware of the pitfalls of trying to obturate canals with this method, Schilder's vertical compaction of warm gutta percha technique was created to try to more thoroughly shape canals and address complex canal anatomy during obturation. Some 60 years later, we now find ourselves back in the single gutta percha cone embedded in cement era. As with most things, the pendulum generally settles in the middle, and while our shapes won't be as large as the classic hand-created warm gutta percha shapes of the 60s and 70s, I believe that the current minimalist shapes will give way to a compromise between the two that allows for reasonable cleanliness of the canals, while at the same time obturating canals with a moldable material rather than cold cones in a sea of cement. There's no question that certain types of systems may be easier to use. For example, some clinicians may prefer reciprocating instruments versus ones that turn in a circular motion. I prefer the classic circular motion because I prefer to auger out any debris 
out of the canal rather than using reciprocation. But that's my personal preference. Anodonics is not a paint by numbers specialty. And anybody who attempts to sell you their magic file system that treats all cases or treats all canals with a single rotary file, they're misleading you. Perhaps the best advice I can give you when considering which file system you need to purchase is that you need to understand the most important concept. It's not the paintbrush. It's the painter. Experienced clinicians can use almost any kind of file system to create the results that they desire. They've studied the canal system anatomy using 2D and 3D imaging. They have evaluated the root thickness, associated pathology if it's present, and likely foramen location. They also shape the canals according to, number one, the limitations of the instruments that they're using, number two, how they will obturate each particular case, and number three, how their treatment will affect prognosis, predictability, longevity, and restorability. So what you must decide as a clinician is, which system gives you the most reliability for the results that you want? Do file costs play a part in your decision? That depends upon where you live in many cases. Some of you living in the countries where endodontic fees are minimal must consider this a lot more seriously. Lastly, if you have any doubt about the condition of the instrument that you're about to use, toss it. Reaching for a new file is always much less expensive than breaking a file in the canal and having to deal with that. Remember, when we do the right thing, we both get better, patients and clinicians. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Beyond the Terminus. Please remember to like and subscribe. This channel remains free of commercial sponsorship and has no banner ads. It relies upon you to spread the word. And I'm always open to feedback and suggestions regarding topics in the future. I look forward to our next trip when we go Beyond the Terminus. See you then.